The Holy Gospel for today is recorded in Luke chapter 3. As the people were in expectation and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John whether he might be the Christ, John answered them all saying, I baptize you with water, but he who is mightier than I is coming, the strap of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his barn. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. So with many other exhortations, he preached good news to the people. But Herod the Tetrarch, who had been, reproving, uh, who had been reproved by him for Herodias, his brother's wife, and for all the evil things that Herod had done, added this to them all. And he locked up John in prison. Now when all the people were baptized, and when Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, the heavens were opened. The Holy Spirit descended on him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, you are my beloved son. With you, I am well pleased. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Christ. Please be seated. river came our Lord, the Christ whom heavenly hosts adored, the God from God, the light from light, the Lord of glory, power, and might. The sermon text for today is from Titus chapter 3, verses 5 to 7. Jesus saved us, not because of the righteous things we had done, but because of his mercy. He saved us through the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit, poured out on us generously, so that having been justified by his grace, we might become heirs, having the certainty of eternal life. This is our text. Please be seated. So the country pastors all got together one morning for coffee, and they discovered that they all had a common problem. Bats were infesting their bell towers. The bats were making a terrible mess. 
Well, I got so mad, said one pastor, that I took a shotgun and fired at them all. I left holes in the belfry, but it did very little to the bats. I tried trapping them alive, said the second. Then I loaded them in the back of my pickup, drove 50 miles and released them, but they beat me back to the church. <laughs> well, I haven't seen my bats for a long time, said the third pastor. Well, oh, what did you do? I sprinkled some water up there, I baptized the bats, and I haven't seen them since. <laughs> And if that story doesn't make you laugh, then it'll make you cry. Because unfortunately, that's a common experience for, for many churches. People come to the church desiring Christian baptism, church membership, and they're welcomed with open arms. But many people drift away. And for some reason, they don't take the promise and commitment that they made very seriously. And they don't take the blessings that God has prepared for them to pour out on them. They don't take that too seriously either. Well, there's good news and there's bad news. The good news is that some people who came here to this baptismal font who were baptized remember their vows and they've stayed committed to God and that commitment is is evident to all of you but the bad news is that there are some who are like the bats in the third pastor's belfry we haven't seen them since the water got sprinkled so what is baptism and what is it all about well, as we read in the gospel lesson for today at Jesus' baptism, the heavens were opened, the Holy Spirit came down like a dove on the baptizee, and the voice came from God the Father saying, you are my beloved son, with you I am well pleased. And that's what happened to us at our baptism. Heaven itself opened up. The Holy Spirit came down, and God, the creator of the universe, said, this is my child. I am your father, and I am well pleased. Baptism is the heart of the Christian faith. Baptism is the sign and the assurance that we belong to God. It's a requirement for God, for belonging in the church, and it's a sacrament. God in his grace comes to us because we could not go to him. He comes to us. Athanasius, church father, in the fourth century said it this way the son of god became the son of man so that the sons of men might become the sons of god god came to us when we couldn't go to him so why do christians take baptism so lightly well, perhaps because they don't realize the three things that baptism says to us. The first thing baptism says to us is that it is God who saves us. The focus in baptism is not on the believer or the person and what they have done. The focus is on what God does. Baptism symbolizes a turning from sin, but it is God who makes this all possible and who affects this turn. It is God who comes and delivers us from sin, death, and Satan. It's not the victory of our will, but it's the victory of God's will. And that's why we can baptize infants 
infants who maybe don't even know what's going on because it's all about what God is doing in this sacrament. When we baptize a person, yeah, it's nothing about what we're doing. It's everything about what God is doing. We come to baptism as humble people, and we depend on God for our life, for our salvation. We come in total humility. In Vienna, Austria, there's a church where the Habsburgs, the ruling family of the Austrian-Hungarian Empire, are buried. And when funeral processions arrive at this church for burial rites, there's a tradition. The mourners leading the procession knock on the door. Who is it that desires to enter, says the priest through the locked door. His Majesty the Emperor, calls out the guard. I don't know him, answers the priest. A second knock follows with the same question posed. Who is it? And this time the guard replies, His Honor the Highest Emperor, I don't know him, answers the priest. Finally, a third knock is heard. Who is it? A poor sinner, your brother, comes the final answer. And then the door is opened and the burial continues. And that's the proper attitude for baptism total and complete humility. It's not the water that saves us. It's not our intention that saves us. It's not our name or reputation that saves us. It is God who saves us. The second thing that baptism tells us for our journey through life is that change is necessary. And it is God who will go with us as we walk out into the new year and into the new life ahead. God will go with us and God will help us. When Yassine Kalaj <coughs> was baptized <coughs> as an adult at All Saints Lutheran Church in Edmonton, where I was pastor at the time, he wore brand new clothes to the service. Why? Well, because he understood. He understood that he was starting a new life, a new way of living. I don't know if he burned his own clothes. I never, the old clothes, I, I didn't ask him that. But I do know that he told me that he wanted to be done with the old ways and get on with the new. And that's what baptism means. We are buried with Christ by baptism into death. That just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too will walk in newness of life. One of the things that none of us want to do is to fall back into the old evil, dirty, sinful ways of life. And that would be like coming into the house with filthy, dirty, smelly clothes caked with mud, taking a refreshing bath and then putting on the same old filthy garments. It's not something we want to do, and it's not something God wants us to do. Baptism is here to wash us, to change us, and God wants to reclothe us on this journey to newness. Why would we ever want to go back to the ungodly ways? God has a better road for us. The third thing that baptism tells us is that it is God who will give us his power to change, and we will need that power. You know, 
Baptismal fonts are audible. Have you ever listened to one? Well, let's go over and listen to this one and see what it has to say. You have to listen very carefully. You see the water moving. You feel the power of the Spirit. And this is what the water is saying. Come, all you who are needy, come and receive what God wants to give you freely and without price. He died for all that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and rose again. And I often tell people that as they come to church to worship God, one of the first things they could do on their journey to church is come up to the baptismal font. That presumes that the cover's off and there's water in there. Well, I don't know why we always cover things up that are so precious to us, you know. But I always encourage people to come to the baptismal font that's center in this church and listen and watch the water move and then say, once again, I begin in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And of course, you can do that at home too. Every time you get up, where's the first place you go after you get out of bed? You go to the, to the sink and you wash your face. And as you're doing that, you can say, I begin this day once again in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. This font will not go with you through life, but God will. God will go with you just like he did with the children of Israel for 40 years in the wilderness. God will go with you. And so each morning as you start the day, why not begin it with God? and start in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And realize once again what happened at baptism continues on, and it's so precious in your life. You are so precious to God. Realize that as far as you are concerned, the heavens have opened up, the Holy Spirit has come down, and God has said directly to you, you are mine. You are my beloved child, and with you I am well pleased. Back in the 1500s, Martin Luther got quite depressed at times. He was really subject to a lot of depression. And he had his dark hours of doubt and worry and despair. And in such dark times, he would fortify himself and he would face Satan the tempter with these Latin words. Baptismus sum, baptismus sum. I have been baptized, I have been baptized. Get away from me, Satan. And as you reflect on baptism today, I want you to reflect on your baptism. Well, it, it might have happened when you were a child, or it might have happened when you were an adult. And so maybe you remember it, or maybe you don't. But as you reflect on your baptism, remember these three truths. It is God who acted in baptism to save you. It is God who will go with you into a bold,
old, new life. It is God who will give you the power you need to change. 2,000 years ago, when Jesus was baptized, heaven itself opened up and God was there. Today, heaven is open and God is here. And you can leave this church with great confidence and enthusiasm today. And when people say to you, how come you're smiling so much? How come you seem to have so much joy? You can say, because I have been baptized. Say it with me. Because I have been baptized. And you are a precious, precious child of God. Amen.